today's video, I wanted to explore with you a little bit more in depth in my herpetology textbook. Um, for those of you who don't know, herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians. So that includes frogs, salamanders, snakes, crocodiles and alligators, and turtles, and tortoises, and Sicilians, and lizards, <laughs> in no particular order. So, I just wanted to do a little bit of page flipping with you guys, and maybe just some soft talking um, about the cool animals that are in this book. So. so, I'm sure you guys are familiar with all the animals that I listed, except maybe you've never heard of Sicilians. This right here is a Sicilian. They kind of look like giant worm snakes. Um, to be honest, I don't think, I don't know much about them uh, compared to the rest of the herps in this book, but they're very secretive. I think they are mostly fossorial, which means that they live um, underground. So it's very rare to see them, but they are in amphibian. Let's see. Let's find... Here's the frogs. Let's find a frog for you guys to look at. And I am obviously looking at this upside down, so it may take me a minute to be able to read something or see what it's talking about. might be familiar with. Is this what I think it is? No, it's not. It's a Bolivian white-lipped frog. Ooh, okay. I don't know much about this particular one, but I'm going to show you, just so you're not getting bored with me. So, look how this frog is shaped. It kind of looks like the dead leaves that it's laying on. And it's camouflaging itself. You can see where it can be found in the world. are endangered, like severely endangered, if I'm not mistaken.
And here we go. Here's a frog that maybe some of you guys who live in North America are familiar with. This is a pickerel frog. Pickerel, 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 pickerel frog. It's so pretty. And this one is, sorry, I don't remember. A black spotted rock frog. Oops. A black spotted rock frog. That green one right there. It's so pretty. their eye and that scale gets shed and replaced when the rest of their body sheds as well so therefore they technically can't blink because they don't have eyelids <laughs> either, although it is most closely related to a lizard. This is one of my favorite animals ever. It's called a tuatara, and it's incredibly endangered. It's known as a living fossil because it's the only species in its um, genus, and it is can only be found in, I don't know, is this a map in New Zealand? Yeah, it's only found in New Zealand, um, and it's just so cute. There's very few of these in zoos around the world because I don't think they do very well in captivity, but they are endangered like many other animals, especially many animals in New Zealand because of invasive species like um, cat, domestic cats, and other um, introduced mammals that prey on either the tuatara directly or eats their eggs. And because they're such an old animal, they don't have, they, they never, evolved um, the behaviors that they would need to be able to uh, survive around these introduced animals. Sicilians. I think these are. Are these Sicilians or are they legless um, uh, lizards? See, even though I absolutely love herpetology, I'm obviously by no means an expert. Um, but I really do hope that I'll be able to find a career path that focuses on uh, maybe a certain type or a certain species of herbs. Okay, so these are not Sicilians, and what gave it away was this picture right here. Because this guy has little teensy teensy little leggies. Oh, little leggies. And that's how I realized that they were um, worm lizards. <laughs> This 
this one has a huge fat tail. It's in the family Iguanidae. You can find iguanas. This is a very common um, lizard found throughout North America. And, oh, sorry, I'm trying to not destroy my plant over here. It's called a green annelie. Some people call them anoles, but I'm pretty sure the correct way to pronounce it is annelie. It's A-N-O-L-E, annelie. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. The language is flexible like that, so you can say it however you want. But these guys are really cool. They're also very territorial. Um, sometimes, even though they're green, there are green annelies and brown annelies, but um, you can also find brown, green annelies, <sighs> which I know is confusing, <laughs> but they can slightly change their color based on um, if they're feeling threatened or based on their environment. Um, I actually helped my wife do a small study on them when we used to live in North Carolina. I did that for a class. It was really cool to observe. You could always see their, like, their sacks um, get puffed up when they were being like, really territorial towards another Annalie. Snakes. I have a ball python. Ooh, okay. This is one of my favorite snakes ever. It's called a ring-necked snake, and you can find them throughout uh, North America. They're very, very small. You can find some that are quite long, but for the most part, they're very, very small and very skinny. Their underside has this beautiful orangey red color and you can see their namesake the ring around their neck that's how you know i believe their latin name is diadophis punctatus and they are just so stinking cute so cute such beautiful creatures. They're absolutely stunning and so cool. Alligators are only found in North America. Everywhere else, they're called crocodiles. These types of crocodiles are called gharials. They have very, very, very skinny mouths, almost needle-like, and then their noses get a little bit bulbousy. And their mouths are shaped like this because they've evolved to primarily eat fish, whereas if you look at other crocodiles or even alligators that have the really, really wide um, snouts or mouths, that's because they eat <laughs> almost anything, and it's usually much larger prey that takes a lot more uh, jaw power, but because these are skinny, they're much easier, or they're much better for catching fish. 
up. And the next chapter here is for turtles and tortoises. This is a really cool um, diagram of what the inside of a turtle or tortoise looks like. I not trying to come off as condescending, but I didn't know that there's actually people who didn't know that turtles and tortoises are attached to their shell. It's not like in cartoons where they can just pop in and out of their shells. That's not a thing. They're actually physically connected to their shells. So that's why um, it's incredibly dangerous and damaging to them if your dog, you know, finds a turtle in the yard and, you know, uh, damages its shell. Or, of course, the more common issue is turtles trying to cross the roads and getting hit by cars because not only will their shells get damaged, um, which can heal, but it takes a lot of time and energy um, for them to heal, but often the impact will crack the shell and poke into their soft bodies on the inside that has all their organs that they're protecting, and that's often what um, does them in, basically. So please, please, please watch out for turtles crossing the road, okay? And for those of you who don't know, if you see a turtle crossing the road, if you carefully and safely pull over to save it, make sure you put it on the other side of the road where it's heading. So for example, if this turtle right here were crossing a road, we would want to put it over here on this side, not where it came from. Because if we were to put it on the side that it came from, it's just gonna go right back into the road so that it can get to the destination it was trying to get to. Um, turtles have very strong homing senses, so they know where they need to go to hibernate, to mate, um, or just to simply eat or sleep. They have very strong homing senses um, that lead them to their uh, natural um, home ranges. don't like them all that much because they kind of freak me out but they are still cute um, this is a soft shelled turtle and these are usually fully well not fully because they still have to breathe air but um, primarily aquatic turtles look at its long 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 neck so that it can reach out and eat fish and little tadpoles <laughs> and it's got a very soft flat pancakey shell another one and this one is silly looking because it's got like this little straw nose <laughs> and see you can tell that it's aquatic because it has these webbed feet so that it can swim a lot better whereas tortoises um, are primarily land dwelling so they'll have more of like a claw type foot so that they can dig into the ground but this has webbed feet so that it can swim through the water. Oh, and that's called a pig-nosed turtle, by the way. Very cute. <laughs> and let's see here, I believe, yes, right here is another turtle that many of you might be familiar with. It's called a red-eared slider. You often see these in ponds or along the rivers. Um, they're also a very, very common pet turtle, and they're um, a pretty big issue in the U.S. because 
um, because that they're such a common uh, pet, they often get released into the wild, and that upsets the ecosystem balance, and it's uh, quite a problem. So never let your pets out into the wild, guys. Please, 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 please. It disrupts the ecosystem. gopher tortoise in here. I'm not seeing one, but just to show you the difference, these tortoises, you can see how they have these big strong arms so that they can stand up instead of be on their bellies, and they have like these strong clawed feet so that they can dig into the ground, and that's how you know it's a tortoise rather than a turtle that's going to be living in the water. And here's another familiar. This is the North American snapping turtle. You can see by its feet that it is webbed. So that's because they live in the water, but they also have really strong claws because they've got to be able to dig and uh, bury themselves in the mud or to lay their eggs. It's an alligator snapping turtle. And of course, this is what everyone loves. Um, and I don't mean to sound condescending, I just think there's so many more interesting ones, but I do still appreciate a good sea turtle. A good sea turtle. I think it's just because I'm not much of an ocean person that I've never been as crazy about sea turtles as other people are because I don't really like the beach or um or the ocean and let's see is this what I think it is a little bellied sea snake yeah here's some sea snakes this really long one, it's called a yellow-bellied sea snake. book is pretty much just um, talking about like the systematics of frog or the fro systematics of frogs. I mean that is in here, but um, just like how herps work. Maybe um, I'll talk about that in another video. I thought this is a cute picture. Because that content is, that subject matter is a little more complex, um, not that it's impossible to understand by any means, it's just a little bit more in detail, I think I would be more comfortable um, bookmarking a few points and reading about them first just so I'm refreshed on 
the topic and then um, I'd be able to better explain it to you than just off the cuff rambling. Um, so like for example, a subject that I would love to talk about in another video is, uh, if you can see it, mimicry. And that's when a, an animal will either mimic another species, for example, um, there might be, uh, like milk snakes are a good example. So milk snakes are the like red and white and sometimes black banded snakes that um, aren't milk snakes. <laughs> Th that is correct, but what I meant was, um, I'm losing my train of thought now. I was thinking of milk snakes and corn snakes, but what is the other one that I'm trying to think of? Coral snakes? Is that what I'm thinking of? Now I'm gonna have to fact check myself, but but coral snakes are the red white banded ones that are venomous, but corn snakes often look very similar to those, but they're not venomous at all. So they're mimicking the pattern of the venomous coral snakes so that um, predators are afraid of them. Uh, another example would be, ah, uh, yes, the North American salamander exhibit. Let's see. You'll see right here, like, the red eft which is the juvenile phase of um, the North American newt, or red newt. And then there's other salamanders that look similar because it's, it's this color at this age to tell predators, hey, don't eat me, I'm gonna taste really disgusting. And other species do a similar thing so that um, predators might think that they are a red eft or they're just, you know, uh, selling what this guy's selling. Like, ooh, don't eat me, I'm orange and yucky, but that may not actually be the case for these guys versus they actually do have toxic skin. Um, but, oh. I was right. Coral snakes. Here we go. I wasn't even looking at that. That's my example that I was giving a second ago. Um, but yeah, as you guys can tell, um, I need to read up a little bit more before I attempt to give you guys better explanations of things. is two frogs in amplexus and that's where you know they're mating <laughs> but I love that word amplexus Ooh. and here you guys can see an eastern box turtle eastern box turtle these guys are notorious for crossing roads. Um, I have saved and uh, sadly unsuccessfully saved far too many of these guys that have been hitting roads. So look out for these buddies. They're one of my favorites. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
if you did, I'll try to do a more scripted video just so that you can um, maybe better enjoy the information if you are actually interested in it. Um, I don't have too many other animal books because I am primarily interested in herpetology, so I'll have to see what else I have. Um, but maybe I have another wildlife biology book that I'm forgetting about, and I can always use that for page flipping in the future. Okay. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see 